let's continue to work with absolute value. The absolute value of six is written like this. Notice the two small vertical line segments on either side of the six. We read this as the absolute value of six. On the number line, count the number of units from six to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is six units from zero. What other number has an absolute value of six? Did you say negative six? That would be correct. Why? Because negative six is six units from zero. The absolute value of negative six is equal to six. Six and negative six are opposites. Negative six and six are both six units from zero. Remember that the absolute value of a number is the distance between the number and zero. Every number and its opposite are the same distance from zero on the number line. A number and its opposite have the same absolute value. Two and its opposite, negative two, both have an absolute value of two. So today we're going to explore absolute value using elevation and temperature. Remember, the elevation of an element is its height above or below sea level. I can place our scuba diver above or below sea level. Let's place her at 60. 60 meters below sea level. And then we'll place our bird. And let's go ahead and put it at. 40 meters above sea level. Lastly, we'll put our fish and we'll put it right at sea level, which is zero. The scuba diver has the lowest elevation, but it would have the greatest magnitude. We determine the magnitude by taking the absolute value of its numerical part. So the absolute value of 40 would be 40, the absolute value of zero, zero, and the absolute value of negative 60 would be 60. The scuba diver has the greatest magnitude. Let's look at some scenarios. So a part of the city of New Orleans is six feet below sea level. We can use the negative six feet to describe its elevation and the absolute value of negative six feet to describe its vertical distance from sea level. In the context of elevation, what would each of the following numbers describe? So notice that it's negative six feet describes its elevation. There are no absolute value symbols included. When we include the absolute value symbol, we are then talking about distance. I'm going to show you some numbers and I want you to decide if it is describing its elevation or its vertical distance from sea level. Here's the first one, 25 feet. Notice this number does not include the absolute value symbol. So it would represent the elevation of 25 feet above sea level. Let's try another one. Notice that the number within the symbol is positive. So it references the distance in feet between a point 25 feet above sea level and sea level. The absolute value symbol tells me that it is distance. Negative eight feet. So this value has a negative symbol and no absolute value symbol. This means that it is the elevation, which is eight feet below sea level. Last one. Did you say that it is the distance in feet between a point that is eight feet below sea level and sea level? Did you notice the difference between the two notations? Let's try another one. The elevation of a city is different from sea level by 10 feet. Name the two elevations that the city could have. Let's look at a vertical number line. Zero represents sea level. A difference of 10 could put us at 10 feet, but it could also put us at its opposite of negative 10. A difference of 10 feet from sea level could be 10 feet above sea level or its opposite, 10 feet below sea level. 
both would have an absolute value of 10 or a distance of 10 feet from sea level. Let's move on to temperature. We write negative five degrees Celsius to describe a temperature that is five degrees Celsius below freezing point and five degrees Celsius for a temperature that is five degrees above freezing point. That negative symbol tells me that it's below. In this context, what do each of the following numbers describe? So I'm going to show you some numbers and I want you to pause after each one. What do they describe? First one. So one degree Celsius would be above freezing point. Let's try another one. Negative four degrees Celsius would be below freezing point. Let's get a little tricky with this one. Notice the absolute value symbol. So this would mean that it is the distance in degrees between freezing point and 12 degrees Celsius. Freezing point being zero degrees Celsius. Okay, and then our very last one. Did you notice the absolute value symbol? So this would mean it's the distance in degrees between freezing point and negative seven degrees Celsius. I hope you're getting the hang of it. Let's do a temperature check. Which temperature is colder, negative two degrees Celsius or one degree Celsius? Well, because negative two is below freezing, that would mean that negative two degrees Celsius is colder. Next question, which temperature is closer to freezing temperature? So there's our freezing point. Is it negative two degrees Celsius or one degree Celsius? One degree Celsius is one unit from zero and negative two degrees Celsius is two units from zero. So one degree Celsius is closer to that freezing temperature. Last one. Which temperature has a smaller absolute value? And explain how you know. Pause the video now and try it for yourself. Let's check your answer. The absolute value of one degree Celsius is equal to one. The absolute value of negative two degrees Celsius is equal to two. So, the absolute value of negative one degree Celsius is less than the absolute value of negative two degrees Celsius. So one degree Celsius because it has a closer distance to zero than does negative two degrees Celsius. We can also use absolute value when we're talking about money. Let's say that a bank teller assisted two customers with transactions. One customer made a $45 withdrawal from a savings account. So we'll put this at $45. Notice that he is in debt, right? Oops, one more, there it is. And the other customer made a $15 deposit. We can use absolute value to show the size of each transaction. So let's look at it. Which transaction, a debt of $45 or a balance of $15 involved more money? You can see the visual here and see that a debt of $45 would be more money than a balance of $15. So today's goals, we wanted to be able to explain what the absolute value of a number is. We also wanted to be able to find the absolute values of rational numbers. And lastly, I wanted you to be able to recognize and use a notation for absolute value. 